Something buried beneath the sands of Western China has shaken the story of our past to its core. In a land once feared as the place of no return, the sands of the Taklamakan kept a secret no one was meant to find. Archaeologists uncovered something no one was prepared for. Men with auburn beards, women with golden red hair, children whose strawberry braids still glimmered after 4,000 years. The desert had kept them perfectly intact, skin, clothes, even strands of hair untouched by time. Their faces were tall and sharp, their clothing woven with patterns never seen in ancient China. Nothing about them made sense. For centuries, old chronicles spoke of yellow-haired tribes roaming China's far west, tales dismissed as wild exaggerations or legend. But these bodies proved the stories were real. When researchers began testing their DNA, the results stunned everyone. They weren't European travelers who had somehow wandered east. They belonged to a lost people, a lineage sealed off from the rest of the world for nearly 9,000 years. Their genes carried the same ancient markers found in the Ice Age hunters of Siberia, the very origin of blonde hair itself. That discovery didn't just shift timelines, it tore open the silence around our beginnings, unveiling truths the Earth itself seemed to guard. The Tarim mummies didn't change history, they exposed its fractures, the missing pieces we were never meant to see. Somewhere beneath those endless dunes, others may still lie hidden, preserved in the dust, waiting for the right moment to speak. But where did this impossible hair come from? To find the answer, scientists dug not into sand, but into ice. Deep in the icy ground of Siberia, scientists stumbled upon something far more explosive than any artifact, a genetic time bomb waiting 18,000 years to go off. A tiny, silent mutation that would one day change how humanity looks. No one could have predicted what came next. The DNA from this ancient site told an impossible story. The oldest known carrier of the blonde hair mutation didn't live in Europe or Scandinavia, but in south-central Siberia, at a hunting camp called Afontova Gora. The discovery sent a chill through the scientific world, unraveling the very idea of what it meant to look human. For centuries, blonde hair was seen as a purely European trait, immortalized in art, legend, and science books as something born in the North. But the evidence pointed somewhere entirely different, the windswept steppes of Asia. The truth lay in a single gene, KITLG, the master switch for melanin production in hair follicles. One microscopic change, a simple swap in the DNA code from C to G, dimmed the pigment just enough to turn dark hair into light, like turning down a lamp instead of switching it off. This subtle tweak softens the color, creating shades that ranged from gold to ash blonde. These ancient hunters, the ancient North Eurasians, became the genetic ancestors of both Europeans and Native Americans. As they spread west after the Ice Age, they carried the blonde mutation into Europe. Others drifted east into Central Asia, taking those same golden genes across the vast tundra long before any recorded contact between east and west. Their DNA is now a ghostly signature, found from the Atlantic to the Pacific proof of a forgotten population that once stood at the crossroads of the world. They didn't look like modern Europeans or Asians. Their faces were unique, a mix of traits shaped by brutal cold and relentless survival. The blonde hair mutation wasn't just a quirk of beauty. It may have given them an edge, perhaps tied to sunlight, vitamin D, or even social selection. Scientists still debate the reason, but one thing is certain. A random spark in the Ice Age changed the face of humanity forever. Their faces vanished from history, but their DNA never did. At Ancestry Code, we uncover traces of the forgotten, genes that science still can't explain. Subscribe to keep uncovering mysteries like the lost blondes of Asia and the ancient world they left behind. Now, on to the video. Death clings to the sands of the Taklamakan Desert. Even its name whispers warning, the place of no return. A sea of shifting dunes so deadly that ancient travelers carried their own coffins before crossing. Nothing should live here. Nothing should ever have lived here. 
But 4,000 years ago, life defied the impossible. In the Tarim Basin, a vast, sunken world trapped between the Tian Shan, Kunlun, and Pamir Mountains, an entire civilization took root where survival should have been unthinkable. The summers scorched above 100 degrees Fahrenheit, winters cut like knives, and the rain, if it came at all, vanished before touching the ground. This was not a place for humans. Still, they built homes, buried their dead, and left behind traces of a life that made no sense. When archaeologists first unearthed their remains, they expected little more than bones. Instead, they uncovered bodies frozen in time. Faces with pale skin, high cheekbones, and hair that glowed in shades of red and gold. Perfectly preserved beneath layers of sand, the mummies looked nothing like the people who later inhabited the region. At first, researchers assumed they'd stumbled upon lost Europeans who had wandered too far east. That theory collapsed the moment scientists extracted their DNA. In 2021, genetic testing revealed a truth stranger than fiction. These weren't travelers. They weren't migrants. They were a genetic island, a population sealed off from the rest of humanity for nearly 9,000 years. Their DNA was 72% ancient North Eurasian, the same mysterious group that first carried the blonde hair mutation, and 28% ancient Northeast Asian, a blend never seen before or since. They adopted farming, weaving, and herding from neighboring cultures, but their genes never changed. No trace of the Yamnaya, no connection to the Indo-Europeans, nothing but silence in their genetic record. That pale hair didn't come from the West. It belonged to a lineage older than history, preserved through ages that most of humanity forgot. Each mummy stands as a mirror to humanity's forgotten beginnings, a face from an ancient world preserved by the desert that tried to erase it. But the genes buried beneath the sands of the Tarim Basin wouldn't stay hidden forever. They were about to awaken and reshape the destiny of everyone who carried their echo. Their graves weren't just graves, they were vessels for eternity. Boat-shaped coffins sealed under layers of cattle hide drifted through time like ships crossing a silent desert sea. Inside, men and women lay surrounded by symbols of rebirth, wooden carvings beside men, woven baskets beside women, reminders that life to them never truly ended. It only changed form. Even after 4,000 years, their last moments still whisper to us. In their teeth, scientists found traces of their final meals, milk, grains, and fragments of ancient cheese. Those tiny clues told a story no one expected. These people were making cheese and yogurt in 2000 BCE, long before most humans even knew how to handle milk. They turned hardship into innovation, transforming something dangerous into nourishment. They lived along the desert's hidden rivers, building small worlds of green where none should exist. Their bones reveal they were herders, farmers, and survivors. People who refused to give up. And what they wore was unlike anything else found in ancient Asia. Archaeologists uncovered wool trousers made for riding, felt hats shaped like cones, and cloaks woven with complex patterns that showed real skill and creativity. They dyed their fabrics with colors made from desert plants, turning survival into art. No one can explain how a people so cut off from the world learned so much. They shared no blood with their neighbors, but their tools and ideas seemed to come from faraway places. It's as if they traded knowledge instead of genes, a mystery that still puzzles scientists today. They farmed where no crops should grow. They made cheese in a land of sand. They dressed like they were from a forgotten world. And through it all, they carried something ancient, a piece of DNA that time forgot. It stayed hidden in their blood, buried under the sands, waiting to be found again thousands of years later. As the world warmed and new people began to move across Asia, their bloodlines started to spread. The spark that once burned in the desert would travel quietly, carried by generations, shaping faces and stories far beyond their homeland. And that's where the next story begins, when the forgotten genes of the desert started to change the world we live in today. 
Thousands of years after the desert people disappeared, movement stirred once more. From the far northern steppes came a new kind of wanderer, light-haired herders known as the Afanasievo, carrying with them secrets written in bone and a silence older than the sands themselves. They rode with their animals across endless plains, carrying the gene for blonde hair, a tiny change in their DNA that would one day color the world in ways no one could predict. By around 3000 BCE, they reached the edges of northern China and southern Siberia, pushing close to the Tarim Basin. But they never crossed into that sealed world of sand and silence. The Tarim people remained untouched, their genes frozen in time, separated from the rest of humanity. And that's where the story takes a strange turn. Because blonde hair didn't just appear once in human history. It happened again, on the other side of the planet. In 2012, scientists studying people from the Solomon Islands in the Pacific discovered something shocking. Many of the islanders had naturally blonde hair, yet their DNA showed no link to Europe or Asia. Their golden hair came from a completely different mutation, this time in the TYRP1 gene, the same color, two totally separate origins. It's as if nature rolled the dice twice and somehow landed on the same result. Both the desert herders of Eurasia and the islanders of the Pacific developed blonde hair on their own through separate paths that had nothing to do with each other. Scientists call this convergent evolution, when life finds the same solution more than once. Even today, no one fully understands why. Was it just chance? Was it survival? Or did blonde hair offer something deeper, a hidden advantage written in light? One thing is certain, our DNA holds more secrets than we can imagine. And if the same trait can appear in two corners of the world with no connection at all, what else might be hiding in the code that built us? They vanished almost as suddenly as they appeared. The light-haired people of Central Asia slipped quietly out of history, leaving behind only the frozen faces of their mummies and the fading words in ancient books. For a time, their features still flickered through the records, faint echoes of a people slowly blending into the world around them. The records of the Grand Historian. From 94 BCE, describes the Yuji as having some with light hair. Centuries later, the Book of Wei mentions the Tiela tribes, noting green eyes and red hair. Even then, these traits were already becoming rare enough to be remembered as something strange. Over generations, migration and intermarriage softened those differences. Harsh sunlight across Central Asia made darker hair more practical, offering better protection from heat and disease. As farming replaced nomadic life, nature began favoring darker tones, slowly erasing the pale shades once common in the region. By the time of the medieval empires, the light-haired people had all but disappeared. Their genes still whispered beneath the surface, but the faces that carried them were gone. When the Mongol conquests swept across the land, the final traces blended into the great human tide, leaving behind only a mystery written in bone and dust. Hidden in mountain valleys and remote villages, the ghost genes of ancient Asia still walk among us. The genetic fingerprints of the ancient North Eurasians, the first carriers of blonde hair, persists in unexpected places. Today, certain Central Asian populations still exhibit higher frequencies of light hair and eyes. The Kalash of Pakistan, Pamiri groups of Tajikistan, some Uyghurs of Xinjiang, and the Nuristani of Afghanistan. Historical records document that the Hmong people once had significant populations with light hair and eyes. The 3rd century text, Records of the Three Kingdoms, describes them as sometimes having yellow hair, blue eyes, and prominent noses. As they migrated southward into Southeast Asia, these traits became less common. Modern genetic studies have identified ancient North Eurasian DNA fragments across numerous Asian populations. A 2019 study found many Central Asian groups carry 5 to 30 percent ancient North Eurasian genetic material, the same ancestral population that first developed blonde hair. The Uyghur population carries a complex genetic heritage, approximately 50 to 60 percent East Asian ancestry and 40 to 50 percent Western Eurasian sources. This mixed heritage explains why some Uyghurs still display light hair and eyes at higher frequencies than surrounding populations. 
As we are about to rewrite our human history, every leap in science begins with a moment of doubt, when the evidence refuses to fit the story we've been telling. The discovery of blonde-haired mummies buried beneath Asia's deserts didn't just add a new chapter to history, it tore whole pages out and forced us to start again. For centuries, blonde hair was seen as a European trait, but the truth buried beneath the deserts of China told a different story. It began here, in ancient North Asia, spreading across continents long before modern nations even existed. The Tarim people proved that isolation could breed brilliance. In the heart of an unforgiving desert, they forged thriving settlements, crafted technologies ahead of their time, and guarded their identity against the eroding winds of change. They stood apart, genetically distinct yet culturally alive, defying the quiet rule that blood and civilization must always move together. As new DNA technology keeps peeling back the layers of time, we're beginning to see just how tangled our human story really is. Traits we once believed belonged to one people or one place often turn out to be threads woven across the entire map of humanity. These ancient blondes remind us that human history isn't a straight line. It's a web of connections, migrations, and forgotten chapters waiting to be rediscovered. Could there be more forgotten civilizations buried beneath the sands, holding secrets that will rewrite everything we think we know about ourselves? What do you think? We'd like to hear your theory. Comment your thoughts below.